Can you imagine not being able to scream as that is happening to you? Man, that's brutal. And I know some humans will say, well, that's so freaking cruel. Why do they have to do that? And I do agree to some point, but humans are animals too. And I've seen a whole lot of animals, including my species, start eating things while they're alive. So, I mean, same thing goes for trees. We just can't win no matter how we look at it. We're always the bad guy in some capacity. <laughs> This movie is like Sausage Party meets Finding Nemo. Pedak Pedak, otherwise known as Swimming to the Sea, is a 2012 South Korean CGI musical psychological thriller film about fish trapped in a tank trying to survive for as long as they can so humans don't eat them. And it's so perfectly convenient that the fish happen to be able to see everything that happens to the others that die. The movie starts out on a dock where our macro friend tries to jump out of the bucket. She and her other macro friends were just caught. Next thing she knows, she's dumped into this tank with other other fish. She can see the humans on the outside. There are crabs and other fish there as well. Despite there being so many fish, they just keep packing more and more fish in to the point where they can't even breathe or move or swim. Now the other fish probably have white eyes because... We're not supposed to identify with them. We're supposed to be concentrating on the main character who is right in the middle contemplating why, oh why, did she ever swim with the school? If she had only swam lower that day, or didn't swim with the current or whatever it was that caused her to become caught in the first place. Right by the Fisher's dock is a restaurant. Apparently the fish are still moving while they're being eaten. Just one of the ugliest renditions I've ever seen of a kid. What is he supposed to be, Korean Sid from Toy Story? This kid is just one of the many villains of the story who all he wants to do is see if one of the bigger fish will eat the smaller fish. The little clownfish we see in the beginning, it almost seems like a hat off to Nemo, are just minding their own business and they know that they are sacred. They are not to be eaten. They are specifically for show. I doubt the fish is alive at this point in time because its head is completely separate from its body, but that's still really disturbing to look at. Every night it seems the humans in the red car always come and depending on what they want for dinner, what type of fish, whichever fish is in the tank is the one that gets brought out. The mackerel is thrown in with a bunch of other fish as well as another mackerel. The rest of the fish tell her to play dead. If she goes belly up, the people who are supposed to buy them and eat them will think that they're not fresh. Ugh animation looks rough with the humans. The buyers know that they're all upside down and don't want any of them. Except our friend isn't getting the message and she keeps on going all around. The mackerel that had been here before our new girl comes in gets caught. Unfortunately, she gets to watch the horror before her very eyes as to what happens to him. She literally watches this guy knock him out, but not all the way, and then peel his skin off from each side and then pull out his guts. If fish have the capability to understand what is going on, that must be a very horrific sight for them. I can understand why they go insane and and lose all hope for life, seeing this haunts her dreams. Pretty soon, this guy named Spot, a young fish, out of the group, the friends, the mackerel, the other fish, and the sexy eel, fall into line to another fish that we didn't see previously because he was hiding under the grate. Right under that grate with the holes, there is a halibut or a flatfish. And for some reason, the humans never find out what his hiding spot is, but you never ever consider that, you know, you put one flatfish in there and then you never see him ever. Guess they just chalked it up to somebody else using it, but just, I don't know, it's weird. But they have a million of those halibut, so I guess it doesn't really matter when you have so many others to pick from. They start singing a musical about how the bad things happen. The rest of them want the mackerel to fall in line so that they can survive. Then she watches the other horrific fate, a fish that are fed to them. Since they're not given the food they would naturally eat in the ocean, even though some of them do eat other fish, if another fish drops down and he is dying or sick, the fish in the tank feed him to the flounder in the grate, who kills him and then gives the others the leftovers. Apparently the flounder is the master since he's been to the sea. After the mackerel sees this, she's like, uh-uh, I'm gonna free willy myself out of here right into the concrete. Like, how does that not kill them? Spot, the cute yellow fish, is like, oh my god, look, mackerel escaped, look at her go, like, no other fish has ever done that before, but to be fair, these fish are probably very young, since they catch them fresh, so it's possible that nine months ago, another fish did the same thing, but they would know, because they either weren't alive, or they weren't in that tank. While they're all devouring what's left of the fish, they watch Paddock Paddock make her way to the ocean. Then the carbon dioxide starts to build up, and she starts to black out. The human puts her back in the tank, and it sucks, because she could have made it. The flounder makes note of this. Since the flounder is the master, and man, they really need to replace that tank. But since the flounder is the master, he has this little game for them to keep them occupied. It's a riddle. And whoever is the one that fails or who's last or however the hell it works, they get their tail eaten by the rest of the group. It's kind of wondering, like, what is the point of that? But whatever. He gives them a riddle and says, how many fins does a starfish have? I thought, honestly, the answer was going to be none. Since, I mean, starfish technically don't have fins. But he said, no, uh, 50. 50 is how many they have. And the mackerel's like, um, no, what are you talking about? Have you ever seen a starfish before? They don't have freaking 50 fins. She starts to tell that guy, yeah, dude, I think 
your freaking phone. Have you ever even been to the ocean? They have five fins, dude. But, um, rude awakening. While most sea stars do have five arms, there are some that can have as many as 50 arms. So there's no real right or wrong answer if you answer five or 50 or anything in between. The fish are stupid. What do you want? After this, she still challenges the guy and he gets fed up with her. I'm sorry, is it just me or does this bro look like freaking Samuel Jackson? Oh, come on, bro. Look, don't tell me. Don't tell me you don't see the resemblance. I swear to God, man. It's almost like they modeled this bitch after Samuel Jackson. Oh my god, that is, man. He has the same personality too and everything. I don't think that was a coincidence. Anyway, they decide she loses and they try to eat her tail. She seems like the only sane one in the tank. For most of the movie, this flatfish is just scowling at the mackerel with that Samuel Jackson face. I love how each of the fish have their distinct personalities and it makes them all unforgettable, even though I don't know their names. I do know Spot's name and apparently he's the youngest character, which is equivalent to a little boy because he sounds like a female person, but he's literally a child. And mackerel never gets up trying to get out of there. She keeps asking him, hey, why are you all just still sitting here like this? Don't you understand that you can't be free? Like, why are you all sitting in the tank right now? Just, just waiting to die. Dude, try something. Try to get out at least. And we see her looking as though she misses the ocean. I don't blame her because it's right there. And then we see some character development. This is a flashback of Samuel Jackson and his wife. He was happier then. And she was like, honey, can't you hear the ocean? Exactly the way the mackerel said it. Then she says, look, we won't get eaten if we play dead. You just have to play dead. She begs him to try it and he's like, no, it's stupid. And then he decides, you know what, fine, I'll just try it. Then he's like, look, okay, I'm doing it. And the most heartbreaking thing happens. I think at some point, while his eyes are closed and he's playing dead, she's getting taken, but she doesn't freak out because she doesn't want him to start freaking out and for them to take him too. So she tries to keep him in that stake and just listen to the fear in her voice and the love in her voice. She loves her husband and her mate so much that she doesn't want anything to happen to him, even though she's on the way to be killed in front of him. <laughs> <gasps> right there where she was like you could hear it you could hear in her voice where she's like honey just keep doing that okay honey just keep doing that like she knew she was gonna die and she didn't want him to see but it was too late and he, he didn't feel comfortable lying that way for so long so he looked up and saw the humans taking out his wife and as said before they killed the fish right in front of the other fish and he starts literally floundering, because he's a flounder, but he starts floundering, trying to get through the tank, trying to get to his wife, but he can't get through that invisible barrier that is this aquarium or tank. And he literally watches helplessly as these big alien things that took them from the sea cuts into his wife, and it's just so heartbreaking. He wakes up from his nightmare in the present. At least we kind of understand why he's a little bit more hardened and wary. Mackerel tells Spot about the ocean, and he's just in love. He says that he wants to go to the ocean with her when she makes her big escape. There are other forms of animation in the musical. I don't know why the eel looks so hot. Maybe it's because he looks like a dragon or something. And I don't mean hot like the weird way. I mean hot in like the hot way, if that makes sense. Anyway, after the old Samuel Jackson flatfish gets fed up with them, he tells them do whatever you want. The eel says that she's in charge of the riddles now. And she says, here's a riddle. Let's figure out a way to get out of this hellhole. Does anybody have any ideas? I mean, aside from thinking about useless stuff, how can we actually get out of this situation? Eel's just floating through life like a ribbon. And then Samuel Jackson's like, no, I'm freaking tired of you. You're already dead. We were already dead when they picked us up. Everyone here is gonna die eventually. If you want a chance at surviving for as long as possible, then just play dead like we've all been doing, which is what his wife told him before she herself was dead. While the tanks are being cleaned, which is like, there's soap in there, but this guy is, he's hanging on. He's like, this is my hiding spot and they don't know I'm in here so I'm just gonna try and hack it for as long as possible that's freaking frightening because he can't breathe the entire time or maybe what little water is left on his body before his gills start drying up he can't breathe before he starts suffocating it's kind of like filling up an air with carbon dioxide and slowly passing out or you know when you put a blanket over your head and it's a very thick comforter or something and then you realize slowly that you're having a hard time breathing and then you finally pull the blanket from off your head and you take a very deep breath and it's like you were never breathing air before it's kind of like that while they're cleaning everything they put the fish in that little blue bucket and our girl decides that she's going to get out of here because now they're closer to the ocean and it's not that far a fall if she dies she's gonna get to the ocean and the little boy spot is like i'm going with you that red guard with that very ugly lady comes again 
and she tells him that the fish are escaping. She only found out because her high heel ended up stepping on one of the fish and she heard the noise of poor Spot flapping around. Look how close they are to the edge. Look how, look how close, look at that. And this is the part that, forgive me, but this is the part that just starts infuriating me about this movie because this is a great lesson in life, honestly. Great lesson in life to show you that sometimes, as my father said, it's okay to be selfish. Spot is like, no, I... I can't move. Mackerel is right there. You're right there by the ocean. What are you doing? I get it. I get it. You don't want to leave Spot. And, and you know, Spot's a great boy and everything. But you're right there. It's not like you could save him. You can't fight the humans. You have no poison barbs. You're literally just a flapping fish. There is nothing you can do. Literally nothing you can do except die with him. And she's like, um. She looks back at the ocean. She looks back at him. And she's back in the tank. Because... That was a smart idea. She goes back in the tank and poor Spot is like, thanks for not leaving. Because I get it, he found a new friend and he doesn't want to be alone. That's great. That's cool. But if you were a real friend, you would have been like, look, you need to go. Forget about me. Just go save yourself. Because, you know, that's what real friends do. But no, she had to stay, and I get it. I understand she felt bad for him and stuff. But you literally have a chance to get out. You, you are right there by the ocean. Like, <sighs> That part got on my nerves so badly, and everyone's like, yeah, but that's her friend. Bitch, you don't know him. You were only in that tank for like a day. You don't know that fish. You have another family out there, probably have kids, probably have a mother and father, or probably have a boyfriend, or other people that you sleep around with their pets. I don't know. I don't know what fish do in the ocean, but I know that they have a life. She clearly wanted to get back to the ocean for a reason, because it was her home, and she risked her life several times to get out of there. She showed them how to do it, and then, good example setting for the others, you show them that you can get to the ocean, that you don't do it, and that you go back in the cage and then you know what happens can you guess what happens as a result of her doing the stupidity that she just did now brace yourselves because this is spoilers mega spoilers for this movie and now samuel jackson is freaking the hell out crying and freaking out the way he did when his wife got eaten <sighs> I've seen this time and time again. I've seen people throw their lives away because, oh my god, my friends though, my friends. Sometimes you gotta look out for yourself. Seriously, you need to look out for yourself because sometimes your friends will end up getting eaten and you won't or your friends will get eaten and so will you. And you know what could have happened if she had just gone to the ocean like I originally said? She would have been able to help everybody else. All the other fish that, 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 get, that get caught in that net, she could have told them, hey, don't go there. Something really bad happens if you go there. She could have warned them and she could have saved a lot of her friends, but she decided to stay for some ungodly reason, unknown to man. I don't even understand, like, oh. But it has a decent ending. You just don't expect her to be the one that dies. It was a decent movie, very dark, and I like movies like that. Movies like Bambi and animal-centered movies where it shows the true nature of what happens in their environment or to them. I like that. So definitely give Padak a watch. It was really, really interesting. It's a far cry from Finding Nemo, so don't expect that when you watch it. But it was decent. Thanks so much for watching. This has been Ulturi. You ask, we answer.